Okay, and here we go, hour number three. It's Monday. It's our Fukushima update. We do update at other times during the week, but this is the big one. With uh, Yochi Shimatsu, who is standing by somewhere in, in Asia. I don't know where he is right now. Where are you? Hello, hello. Yeah, I'm in uh, Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, it's hard to find a quiet place. The protest is still going on a bit. But, uh, you know, it's quieting now. Well, it's a good, it's uh, good, it good phone connection. I think... I beg your pardon? I say we have a good phone connection. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm having trouble hearing, but we're okay now. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, yeah, well, okay. Some things are not so good. We no. We have this election in Tokyo. Which well, that's the, we should uh, start off with that, because uh, what happened in Tokyo, aside from the fact that they're getting snow, which they don't get very often at all. Now, I have uh, someone in Tokyo right now with an Inspector Plus, uh, Yochi, and they have been checking yeah. the snow, and the snow is coming uh-huh. back. Uh, normal reading in Tokyo now, common, is 0.1 microsieverts. The snow is reading 0.2 microsieverts, so it's it's double. That's uh, pretty good. That's, yeah. that's more than double the uh, acceptable rate. So it's obviously radioactive, as we suggested in the last couple of weeks. We yep. saw that heavy fog. Uh, so con- con- condensing, uh, this is stuff coming in from the Pacific coast from basically the waters off Fukushima, you know, that have gone in into the Pacific trench. Clouds get generated, fog gets generated, uh, the stuff is condensing. So the massive snowfall basically is radiation on ice, or radiation in ice. But, it's uh, true. Yeah. All over Japan now. Yeah, all over northern Japan. Now, just for and, our uh, listeners. On both areas, terrible situation. Microsieverts, if you want to get a reading of 0.0 something, all right, when you get that's zero right, point, right. when you get zero point and a, a, a digit, a number, one, one, you got it, it's a, a hundred times more than 0.0 something, uh, or is it a thousand? Yeah, those, those are the, a hundred. Those are the readings along the, yeah, the readings along, uh, uh the Fukushima coast, uh, uh, 0.1 to 2.3. So yeah, yeah, these are uh, high readings. Yeah, no yeah. doubt about it. You know, it's a uh, situation not good at all. The whole city uh, inundated with this stuff. Uh, obviously, Tokyo is a very unsafe place to live, and if people don't take this reading as a reason to move, they're basically what do you call it? They're uh, Suicidal. Cooperating with their own destruction. <laughs> yeah, they're co- yeah, yeah, I'm saying, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, if you, if you don't leave a burning theater, you know, and it's on fire, you're big and, you know, filling up with smoke, uh, uh-huh. and the fire alarms are going off, then, uh, whose fault is it? The guy who, you know, uh, dropped the cigarette or, you know, is it yours also? Uh, are you partially also responsible? What happens next, Nobody's you know, responsible and, uh, anymore, Yochi. Remember that. It's always somebody else's yeah, fault. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, certainly uh, the government is not responsible because the way they look at it, there's nothing wrong at all in Tokyo or Fukushima. The time has come now to start reopening nuclear power plants, you know, start, uh, getting them back online. And uh, this is what this Tokyo election was all about. They were able to basically convince through economic reasons why two million people in Tokyo, two million voters, should vote. Uh, for the resumption of nuclear power. And the anti-nuclear uh, movement, they were also, they were harmed, obviously, by the uh, snow. Many people were at work. They couldn't get to the polling stations in time. Trains were disrupted. Uh, but nonetheless, obviously, the anti-nuclear movement was divided uh, between two can- two major candidates and also, um, you know, the uh, people in Tokyo, many of them are shareholders, uh, they're uh, Consultants, their employees, they work for banks that have links to the nuclear industry. They're people who are dependent on nuclear, uh, on the nuclear industry. The nuclear industry is a very powerful centralized form of energy. You know, you have only a few nuclear plants providing massive amounts of uh, electricity. It's not decentralized, let's say like gas or biomass or renewables. Uh, it's highly centralized. So there's a lot of people who are living off of that. Including many of the uh, corporations, the big uh, industrial corporations, the big commercial corporations, uh, who are, let's say, interlocked with the regional utility companies. 
that they buy shares in those. And some of the uh, board members are the same. Uh, so you have this very closely knit nuclear community economically, and that's why uh, this Yoichi Matsuzoe, the um, the winning candidate, uh, basically a uh, liberal democratic candidate of the Democrat Party, uh, uh, promoted uh, the, the economy. Uh, so many people are dependent on, uh, like, parasitically dependent on nuclear power. They don't have the will to go with renewables, gas, or anything else. You know, seek power and other, uh, 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 you know, electric power in other ways. So they went with nuclear, and this is very bad because. Um, there are not many, many other significant elections ahead. Uh, and the Liberal Democrats, the ruling coalition, does not have to call an election for many years now. So they're many basically years. entrenched. Yeah. yeah, many years, many years. Yeah, they're, they're very much entrenched. They have no need to call elections. Short of, and the only way to bring them down right now is if there's a major scandal at the top. If she's allowed this found to have received money, you know, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars that were stolen from the uh, International Fukushima Relief Fund through Mizuho Bank, if that were to come to light, that possibly could bring him down. Uh, other than that, they're they're very much entrenched in power, and they're talking about restarting. Why, why are they so you know, enthusiastic about restarting nuclear plants? This is not so much to get power. You know, they don't really need the power. They're paying a lot for foreign oil and gas, obviously, but they don't absolutely need that uh, uh, nuclear power. For electricity, what they need is to basically, if these plants don't get started up soon, the banks have to start classifying their loans to the regional uh, power companies as bad loans, non-performing loans. Okay, the government can't keep subsidizing electri- uh, the electricity industry, so therefore, if these become bad uh, bad loans, this basically crushes not only the Japanese bank, uh, you know, shareholders. Uh, but also like private equity, you know, some of these nuclear power plants were financed with private, uh, heavily uh, uh, guaranteed by private equity. Basically, you will see the chain reaction of financial collapse in Japan. So to prevent that, to prevent to keep the nuclear power plants on the books as an asset rather than a liability. Okay, you understand? As an asset rather than a liability. Sure. If the nuclear plants are shut down for good, they're a liability, and the banks basically take the loss. Not one call. Private it's, equity wipes uh, off the book. Stock market has to wipe off the, you know, hundreds right, of billions right, right. of dollars of wealth will be wiped off. And these uh, banks will be shown to be how hard that they, they basically so, depend well, on the cheap end. The government to print paper. They'll basically collapse in the Japanese economy. Collapse. So this well, is what why you're saying is so that they, they almost have to restart them. Some of them. They have to restart them to save the bank. Right. That's this what I'm saying. Providing yeah. power to industry or people. Yeah, just to save the financial institutions, which were unwise enough to invest in something of this risky a nature and not to spread their best across the energy industry. Had they been more diversified, yeah, you know, uh, it wouldn't have been so bad. Had there not been so many nuclear reactors, 54 across Japan, the, the uh, you know, potential, uh, the risk factor would have been much lower. But they went full on. And Japan is one of the most nuclear uh, countries in the world uh, per capita. So, very bad decisions in the past, uh, not only engineering, not just science, but also financial decisions. And uh, so the establishment is rallying, and they're getting all the uh, uh, managers, the middle managers, uh, the power industry employees, and all the periphery industry, the bank, the bank employees, to rally around this pro-nuclear candidate as a statement uh, in order to save uh Japan's Wall Street, basically. And uh, we see very similar things happen in the United States, you know, bailouts and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, we've seen this whole mess since uh, 2008. Uh, sure. That, uh, yeah. how, the government, how the government basically gives money away to those who have just destroyed the wealth of the nation, you know, destroyed the wealth of savers. It's the bankers who get bailed out, not the savers. Okay? So, uh, so certainly not the industries and all the workers and all that. And certainly that's not happening. Farmers, that's not happening. Those are the people who get squeezed in order to save the big guys. So this is the situation. That's why uh, we lost Tokyo, basically. And in losing Tokyo, they're talking about the greatest Olympics ever, so they're going to dump more money into this radioactive pit. They're talking you know, about the Bay. greatest Olympics ever. Yeah, wow. Beijing, you, you remember, was a, a multi-billion dollar. Uh, yeah, it was oh, yeah. 
hugely expensive thing. And labor costs, of course, the materials in China were much cheaper. You know? So yep. this is going to be a, a multi-billion dollar total waste of wealth in Tokyo Bay, which is not only you know, radioactive now from the ash burning, but look at all the snow melt coming out of the sewer system uh, in it's, Tokyo uh, Bay. Coming down from the mountains, uh, you're going to have radiation mm-hmm. in the in the drinking water, as you said, mm-hmm. uh, and as uh, Richard yeah. Wilcox predicted. Uh, it's it's mm-hmm. clear that uh, Tokyo's drinking water will be compromised. It already is compromised, but it's going to get it worse. It already is compromised. Yeah, it'll be worse. It's difficult to measure radiation in drinking water, but it's compromised completely. And the other problem of this massive snow, of course, across Tokyo and all of northern Japan is that that's a massive amount of snow melt. And when it comes down it's, uh, around the Fukushima area, the Apukuma Mountain, it's going to be washing right through the Fukushima plant. So this is why the government has been negotiating with the Fukushima fishermen, knowing full well the snow melt's going to come down after the snow, you know, a week, uh, a week after the snowfall, that they're going to try to allow the so-called bypass release, that they're going to allow all the radiation to try to go around the plant. They're building this huge, uh, they built this huge berm to try to direct it around the plant into the ocean. But, um, you know, the fishermen basically have no future. You know, the time for them Oh no, the right fishermen off, are you know. finished. Now look over here, the fishing fleets mm-hmm. from Alaska to California mm-hmm. that pull in mm-hmm. uncountless, well, countless tons of, of uh, sardines every year caught exactly mm-hmm. Zero sardines. None. Zero. Oh, yeah. Not one. Not one yeah, sardine. Yeah. This is, this has not happened before. Basically, and the, and the alarming thing is not just the fact that you won't have sardines to put in a can and to, and to fish meal, uh, or the pet food. Uh, the real alarming thing is that the other sea life that depends on sea mammals, the larger fish, of course. are basically Basically, they have no food. Well, the food food fishes are are dying. That's right. That's right. Yeah, mass starvation. It's mass starvation of entire species of the North Pacific. It's a major extinction event. And this is only the beginning. We have to understand, you know, this has been going on maybe for two years or so. This is only the beginning. And um, it it was, you know, just as really, it's just very a a brutal beginning in the sense that it's not a gradual kill off. It's, It's a, you know, sudden. You know, in, in terms of uh, species time, it's a sudden kill-off. And this is far more sudden than anything happened in the Ice Age or anything previously. It might be equivalent to, you know, uh, Krakatoa or some other giant volcano covering the Earth with uh, ash, you know, uh, the skies with ash for, for a year or two. It's something equivalent to that where it's so sudden, it's so uh, across the board, all, all, all forms of life that... Uh, Basically, no species can evade this kill-off, including humans. Now, we can't evade it. Our food supply is very intricately linked to the sea. Our water supply is very much dependent on the clouds generated over the Pacific, at least in the western states. And, it, and the bad news also, a lot of the, of the radiation is going across Canada, the northern United States, so even the headwaters of the Mississippi River, for example, and probably the Hudson River and all, are going to be affected by this radiation and this kill-off that is spreading, you know, spreading like a stain of ink across the world's waterways. So this is uh, it, it's really sickening. You know, it's sickening to think about it. We've been talking about it. We've been predicting it. We've been right on the numbers about this. It's gone on faster than we had expected. And it's, it's uh, the result well, you know, I be look worse at than the, we ever anticipated. Yeah. It, it is going to be worse, and not a word from the United States federal government not a word from the Environmental Protection Agency. And you and I, and most of our listeners know, if they've been listening to us, that the feds over here and the EPA are monitoring everything. Yeah. They know exactly what's going yeah. on. In oh, fact, sure. they were, they were, the EPA gave TEPCO some of its first information on how bad the disaster was. TEPCO yeah. didn't have the ability well, to measure, and so the EPA gave them the measurements. They know what's going on, yeah. and that's why UC Berkeley shut down because it was getting results that were embarrassing to the government, and nobody, you're seeing a few cities in California now beginning to pass uh, ordinances requiring measuring and monitoring of the air, the land, and the water in their cities yeah. for the next four or five years.
Okay, and we're back. And uh, strange things going on. Mercury is in retro, and you know what that means. In terms of communications of all different kinds, it means trouble. I just got bumped off my digital line, so I'm filling in on the phone right now. Yochi, uh, I don't know if we got it okay, back yet we're, or not. Okay, we're here. Are you there? Well, Mercury's not the only one. Yeah, Mercury's not the only one in retrograde. We also have an NSA in retrograde, you know? Uh, oh, they're going in, back uh, to the days of the Stasi and the uh, Gestapo, you know? So it's... Uh, yeah. Well, I think they've far surpassed uh, those uh, groups. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, certainly... Uh, the Obama administration has every interest in, uh, you know, preventing this conversation from going forward. Uh, look at the cabinet, the you know, interior minister, uh, uh, the interior, I am, uh, the interior department run by someone who was a, uh, former fundraiser for the nuclear industry, <laughs> finance the nuclear industry, head right. of the, uh, you know, of the uh, energy. Well, the whole government and, here, uh, just, just like the government in Japan. Is so right with them. Mm-hmm. The whole government here, just like the government in Japan, is is predicated on conflict of interest. All of it. Well, conflict of interest, but you know, conflicting with the interests of the public. I think the public interest. I think that's the problem we're talking about here. Very exactly. nuclear, very uh, centralized energy. Wants to keep energy out of the hands of the public. Doesn't want people to generate their own. Uh, you know, it's. They're, they're just certainly not going to relent. They're not going to let up. Firmly committed to nuclear. They like their nuclear weapons. They like their nuclear reactors on their submarines, aircraft carriers. Oh, yeah. And they hope for a world like that. You know, they, they, you know, while all the talk of non-proliferation, they actually want to see smaller adversaries go nuclear so that it justifies their own massive, you know, arsenal of nuclear weapons. There is this uh, I, uh, obsessive I agree. I agree. death wish fascination uh, out there in this yeah. uh, elite, and uh, especially in Japan, where it's really linked to some certain kinds of very strange uh, religious beliefs, you know, of uh, being divinities, that they're divinities, they're not really human. Humans are just garbage uh, to be destroyed, and that these divinities on Earth uh, want to exploit this planet for their own uses, so... Mm-hmm. Kind of a collective madness at the top, you know. It, 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 the high priests have gone mad. We've seen these things before, you know. The Aztec culture, you know, the, the insane high priest who, uh, oh, yeah. you know, would just massacre their subjects uh, out of some crazed belief that this brings about welfare for their own top class of uh, super normal, uh, super better than uh, superior people. It's happened before. Uh, it's happening now. Yeah. Right. right. Curse, Hold on, Yoshi. Of, uh, we have to take a. We have to, hold on, we have to take a break. We'll come right back. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll just be gone a couple of uh-huh. minutes. Okay, and let's get right back to our, our conversation here. We apologize yeah. for all the commercials. We had a uh, serious problem with uh, telecommunications, at, uh, whatever you want to call it. There have been a lot of uh, weird issues in the last several days since. Mercury did go retro. I didn't mm-hmm. used to believe in it, but there's quite a lot of coincidences going on. Here's uh, here's the latest. They're finding, well, big surprise. First of all, uh, TEPCO in their latest admission is what we've been saying for a long time. Admitted now that their estimate of the amount of tonnage of radioactive water going into the sea every day from Fukushima Daiichi was really not 300 tons a day but probably more like 400 metric tons a day. Well, we have projected it could easily be a 1,000 or 2,000 tons a day. They don't know what they're talking about. It's all a lie. It's all a guess. They've also admitted in a de facto sense that their original wall has failed to hold back radioactive water. There are 10,000 tons, 10,000 tons of deadly radioactive water sitting inside of Reactor 1 building. That water is leaking out. Uh, water, you have to remember this at all times, water will find a way. Water is the heavyweight champion of the world, in a, in a sense. It will find a way to get around, over, or under obstacles. That's just what water or liquid does, and it's doing it at Fukushima. I suspect there are dozens of leaks that they may never admit to or never even find, and that doesn't even count the underwater underground aquifer that is passing through the melted-through corium 
which are apparently, as in one case, down to 75 feet, according to the test wells, where they're getting enormous readings of strontium-90. You know, the, uh, the TEPCO is backing up on their numbers because obviously the results from the test wells are far exceeding anything they've shown since the 311 disaster three years ago. Yeah, exactly. And uh, they've even now, I think yesterday, admitted, uh, they said they're going to have to do an entire review of all the data from Reactor <laughs> 1 because the, <laughs> yep. thermometer, the internal thermometers and thermal thermometers were inaccurate. You know, they, they could not detect accurate temperatures inside. And also that their, uh, gyre, their, their counters, the radiation uh, detectors inside the reactors and around the reactors uh, were not calibrated to uh, measure such large releases of radiation. So they just went up to their maximum and then stopped. So they said they're going to have to relook at all of the data. And why is this significant? It's not the fact that they lied or anything like that. What's really significant is that if the numbers were as they suggested, the meltdowns would not be so serious. They, you know, the, the corium, the uh, melted fuel rods, the burned fuel rods would be Correct. still inside the containment chamber. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the, the well readings are showing uh, uh, of a breakthrough, a breakout of containment. So, therefore, the temperatures and the duration of the meltdown and the in the in the uh, you know intensity of the temperatures had to be far far greater than they reported so far. And this is what's kept a lot of, I think, nuclear engineers and scientists uh, uh, still believing that the, there's still fuel rods inside the reactors because the temperatures and length of time and all did not justify ah, yes. the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. the escape. But now that TEPCO is backing off and saying it's many times higher. The temperatures were many times higher. The radiation levels were many times higher. Uh, this would indicate TEPCO is throwing in town and admitting the corium is gone. Okay, that the data so far that people I thought was at least somewhat credible has been totally erroneous. Okay, it's based on this false assumptions all the way. And this was what we warned about very early on. If you look at the data too closely, it could be erroneous. If the data is erroneous, it's going you're going to come to absolutely wrong conclusions, total underestimates, and a false sense of security out of Fukushima. And now, about three years later, TEPCO admits all the data, all of it, at least the reactor one, was off, was wrong, was a total underestimate. We want to so, also keep in mind that TEPCO mm-hmm. can't send any mm-hmm. carbon-based workers, that's us, into buildings one, two, or three. They can't get near them. Right. The radiation levels are getting right. to be so bad now that it would mean a certain death for anyone who goes near yeah. Uh, even trying yeah. to enter those buildings, it's it's completely exactly. out of not control. Even buildings, not just in totally. the buildings, around the buildings, and the vents that are coming anywhere. out of the ground. There's just so many hot spots now that they cannot figure out. So you know they, they've got to uh, just face for the you know just for their own the safety of their workers, but also because the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, is also doing a conducting a review, and I think many of those scientists. You know, who worked at Chernobyl were saying the TEPCO data is totally not credible. It's not credible. You know, there's got to be one of the review finds I think of IAEA will be that all data since 311 has been unreliable. That they, we really don't know the real uh, indication, but the hot spots all around the plant and inside the waters and the wells indicate something far worse than has been imagined, you know, or reported or even imagined so far has occurred. Okay, so. You know, and, and, and we say this very calmly uh, against this whole background of at least the first two years of being accused of being alarmist, of being anti-nuclear exaggerators, and so on. Oh, yeah. Well, TEPCO, yeah. TEPCO itself, the Tokyo Electric Power, uh, Power Company, is now joined the ranks of the alarmists. Okay, they joined us. We didn't join them. Understand? Yeah, you know, I mean, that's really a good point. Home, but we've been suggesting all along that, you know, we've been suggesting all along this thing is far worse. Everything that we can see, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, the inconsistencies, the incongruities that we see indicate a far worse situation, a nuclear-based, tritium-based, plutonium interaction explosion. These were not hydrogen blasts. That containment was burst through in the early hours uh, of, of this 311 disaster. 
that the corium went through to the ground of the corium is breaking apart and, you know, uh, turning this whole underground area into a honeycomb. All of the stuff that we suggested that people thought was over the top, in fact, was a conservative picture of like uh, what was going on. And now the Tokyo Electric Power Company, at the total loss of their own data from the past, paints a, uh, is ready to paint a far different picture today. And that report won't be done probably for six months to a year. So, you know, it, it's right. way after the horses are out of the... But I think the nuclear experts, the people who will carefully follow that data, have to be called out. You know, where? why did you put so much credibility on things that didn't add up? You know, on readings that didn't add up, did not correspond to the actual observations that were seen on security cameras, on the actual statements by workers who leaked out information, by yep. engineers yep. who leaked exactly. you know, you know, I don't, why, why didn't they trust the, the insiders who dared to tell the truth? rather than the official account, which was technically flawed and also biased. Yeah, I mean, when you have these technical flaws, the executives were willing to believe the erroneous data rather than the reports from their own managers and their own workers in the field. Of course, they're going to believe that. They want to get a less worst-case scenario. They don't want to get the worst-case scenario, which, they, which was actually happening. Now they said, now they realize they've got to figure out how to decommission this plant? They need they need the reality. They need to know what they're really dealing with. What well, the they're they're they uh, so they can ask, they can ask for the budget for it. They need to ask for the budget, yeah. and they have to order the equipment. They have to get the workers. They have to prepare a plan. They can't go on this fantasy of bad data. They don't have a plan for the last three years. They have no plan. Unless they realize it. Yeah, they admit that their own executives are saying, "Yeah, if we're going to decommission this thing. We have to know." You know where the corium is, and it's not, it's, uh, we can't keep assuming it's still inside the reactors. We're, we got a much bigger challenge ahead. A whole different level of equipment. We're going to have to deal with a whole bigger budget, a much longer time frame, so on and so forth. So to get down to the work that they've got to do, they've got to get something closer to the reality. You know, and I'm sure that also will be fudged for a public relations reason. You know, they'll pull back to the public. But among themselves, the engineers say, you know, we're not going to do anything. We're not going to go into the in there until we know right. what we're right. up against and what we know, uh, you know, and how to how to do our job because we have no clue. You know, based on the current data, it, it's been proven totally wrong in every case. And uh, people have been harmed. And 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 you know, they've also released uh, they regularly really TEPCO regularly releases uh, data on worker health there, which is all obviously fudged. And many of the workers said, you know, they're they're not taking real readings of it. You know, they're doing, doing total body scans. Uh, there's all kinds of fudging going on. You know, so uh, uh, and then workers obviously being fired. Those who've been exposed and fired before readings can be taken. You know, anyone can show oh, sure. thing with high readings yep. are being tossed out or given leave of absence. So. That data has been totally, you know, and that that was deliberately fudged, you know, deliberately falsified. So this is here's, here's the here's know here's, that, you know, they see the workers go out injured. They see the workers going out in bad shape, and then they themselves are saying, I'm not going to go down there myself unless, you know, we get a clearer picture. Well, uh, I don't know how much longer they can continue to put people into that plant uh, knowing that they're killing them all. There has to be at some point a level of outrage that becomes uh, palpable in the media. Uh, they are killing these people. Yeah. They're going away to die. Uh, they yeah. probably have to yeah. pull in third world people uh, at some point. And I don't. Well, they, I don't they, know they what tried. They, they have tried. They've announced that they will bring in. Uh, they're recruiting foreign workers, uh, but that's not going too well. I think a lot of countries now are, are trying to keep track of where their immigrant workers are going, especially uh-huh. working for the contractors. Those who are headed for contractors have anything to do with Fukushima. I think a lot of the labor uh, ministries, especially in Southeast Asia, are keeping an eye out on. And probably one of the reasons why Putin is going to go to Japan, I think the Japanese government is going to ask Russia for some serious help and some manpower and engineers to uh, help out with Fukushima. Well, well, no, I don't, wait, I don't know what... Uh, Japan. Okay, I mm-hmm. don't know what Russia can do. Uh, there really isn't any technology around that can go down, dig down, and extract the core. And they don't even know where it is yet. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I mean, good luck. Uh, 
Nice thought. Well, Russia's got, heli- yeah, they've got the helicopters. You know, they've got pilots who drink enough vodka and don't care. I mean, yeah, I hate uh-huh. to put it bluntly, but they do have a mm-hmm. heavy, yeah, they can put in the heavy machine, flying the heavy machines that are needed. Yeah, there's probably a lot of technology that was developed. You know, for, uh, uh, Chairman, you know, Obama, she, let, and all, yeah. that don't break down, things like that that Russia has developed that they're going to need. You okay. Know? Here, here's another thing. They, they don't really mm-hmm. have... Uh, in my opinion, and correct me if, if I'm not thinking right on this, I think to put mm-hmm. that plant entombed, try to entomb it in concrete would be nuts because all you would do That's is possible. seal off access to some potential way to get down into the uh, blown reactors down under the ground yeah. with bore or something. You're going to make sure that that plant continues to destroy mm-hmm. the Pacific Ocean, and you'll have no access to it. None. Right. Plus, yeah. how are well, they going to put concrete of, on top of it when well, the, reactors 1, they, 2, they, 3, they, they, and yeah. 4 have mm-hmm. spent fuel pools full of mm-hmm. thousands of tons of material? How are they going to do that? Very good question. It will just contain it and so make worker access completely impossible. To the spent fuel pool. In fact, all the electronic instruments, uh, many control systems, of, of cranes and all, will all be knocked out if you can. If you don't, then I, I, I think it's there. a so stupid it's a idea. idea. Yeah. They have to yeah, have they, access. They don't know what they, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, of course. Again, you've got to vent. Otherwise, the buildup is just toxic, which also gives lie to that photo we saw over Reactor Four, right? Oh yeah, of a new building. Surrounding that, obviously, you wouldn't want to do that because it would kill the operators and will knock out your control system. You wouldn't be able to control the crane if the radiation is knocking out all your electronic systems, all your switches, even your electrical power. You know, it's, uh, I mean, the, you know, and you got to understand that the releases of this sort of level create electromagnetic fields, which are, you know, it's not just the fact that you got hot particles flying around or you got gamma ray bombardment. Uh, the, the, the sum total of all this, you know, radiation is vast, crazy, turbulent electromagnetic fields that are just, you know, wiping out your electronics. Okay. We've seen that already happen, uh, all yeah. over throughout this Fukushima incident. If you allow, if you don't then you allow radiation buildup, those fields are going to get stronger and you're not going to be able to operate equipment. And then this is why I think Putin will be going there because the Russians are known to build very low tech, low tech equipment. Control systems that are more manual, that are more durable. You know, uh, so I think that's what they're starting to realize in Japan. The high tech isn't working. They can't get robots that work. You know, all, all electronic systems are breaking down. The you can't use computers to look at things. Even that breakdown mm-hmm. cameras are just burning out. Video cameras are just burning out in hours. So, yep. Uh, yep. They're, pro- they're probably going to turn to more durable Russian technology where they're sort of like working in the dark. They just got big things out, work in the dark, and try to separate things with the sensors from a long distance, you know, long distance sensors, and try to, uh, you know, it's going to be, in other words, a very messy, sloppy, dirty job. It's not going to be a precision job at all. Well, it's yeah. not going and to be going finished. To be no. Uh, so, let me go uh, so to the issue massive, that... What we're talking about is massive uncovering a radio act, uh, of, of burned out fuel, like the massive radioactive releases to come, you know, as they start oh, to yeah. dig out. Yeah, this, absolutely uh, correct. Uh, you know, they, I mean, they've got to deal with spent fuel pools one, two, and three, and number three yeah. is full of MOX rods. There's a lot of that in there. That's right. So you're talking about exactly. stuff that's even worse that's in four. Do you remember... When TEPCO staged that uh, so-called practice yeah. fuel rod removal yeah, from, I believe yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. was number four, seven. and they they had these yeah, guys four, standing four, around seven. and they they lifted yeah. up a fuel assembly, yeah. and yeah, one of the workers guys, reached yeah. out with his gloved hand and grabbed one yeah. of the rods to keep it from moving around. Do you yeah. remember that? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It was a that was hysterical. Was, that was an exercise. It was a total failure. Obviously, the thing was a fake. This is a total, totally. It was an exercise, a worker training exercise. There's nothing real about that. There's no even real indication that a single rod has been taken out so far. All we've got are we have numbers no from TEPCO, numbers from mm-hmm. TEPCO, which now TEPCO says all numbers from the past were wrong. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, they admit their own numbers. I mean, what more do we need? You know, it's the thief himself yeah. is calling himself a thief. All right, but we cannot. There's nothing credible. Nothing. Well, at remember, all they credible. also they there's also no were. Data. There's no hard data at all. No, no, correct. They also said they didn't want any videotaping of the rods being driven away from Reactor 4 SFP to right. their new home. Now, why would they give a rat's tail, uh, even a radioactive rat's tail, about people being able yeah, to see a exactly. truck driving a fuel assembly away? They would want to have video there, you know, for safety purposes, also to reassure the public. They can't have that because something is not happening there. You might, right. like, you'd have to show burned out rods being loaded in caskets and caskets moved in a truck. I don't think we haven't seen happened. anything. That's why they can't. No, have it. no yeah, they would. That's they, why they don't. We haven't seen photos. That's right. No photo evidence. No yeah. evidence inside the uh, common fuel pool of new rods being inserted. You can no. take pictures of the burned yep. out rods being put in there. We got some bogus big picture of some slightly uh, tarnished rod, uh, yeah, rod casing. We've got uh-huh. nothing. So it, it, we have nothing but reassurances and probably just as false as everything else. It's a grand theater of in, not just ineptitude, but of uh, not just passivity. No, yeah, it's basically a failure. It, 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 this is a, what's coming out of the portrait of absolute failure in the face of massive meltdowns, which defy every known technology that we have that exists today in the, one of the world's most advanced technological nations. Okay, Japan is one of the world's most advanced technological nations. GE is there as well as other American contractors, very advanced. Nothing. Areva, France has been there. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. can deal with Fukushima. There's nothing from the world's most advanced economy, technological centers that can cope with what's happening there. And that is the fact of the situation. That is the fact of the situation. You know, uh, what I'm else is... I'm giving you a lot of music here. I'm just trying to get off the street where there's a lot of whistle blowing or talking. That's okay. It, yeah, okay. it's hard for you to hear okay. me, and I'm All on right. the telephone. All right. Uh, okay. What I'd like to do, we got about uh, four minutes left, is talk a little mm-hmm. bit about the polluted Pacific, the radioactive Pacific, when it hits the West Coast, uh, which could be any day now, or we're, we don't know when. But they are already beginning to use and invent disinformation tactics to explain away what is clearly going to be yeah. a case of many beaches carrying radioactive, mm-hmm. measurable radioactive nuclides in the sand. And one yeah. of the early mm-hmm. disinformation ploys just came out. Years ago, they dumped thousands of 55-gallon drums off the Farallon mm-hmm. Islands off San Francisco. Mm-hmm. They had radioactive mm-hmm. waste in them. They claim now that these drums yep. are rusting, and that's causing the high readings on that one beach by Half Moon Bay. So they're looking for alternative excuses already for when the ocean arrives with its deadly cargo. Okay, I would say great. Then people down in that area, San Mateo County, should sue the U.S. federal government and Department of Defense for dropping those <laughs> <bet. of> cans. <laughs> Let's use that evidence and say, Multi-billion dollar lawsuit for destroying property values in San Mateo County, okay, and along the Pacific Coast. Okay, I there's agree. probably a trillion dollars of losses in property. Let's get up a trillion dollar class action lawsuit by everyone that lives on the coast, every fisherman there, sue the federal government for doing that. You know, I think when the American government, when Obama realized either the U.S. government pays or the Japanese government pays, I think they don't want the U.S. government to pay, not not in the bad financial shape that it's in. So I think all the coastal residents should sue. Go with the cover story and sue, and then see what comes out in court. And the good thing about a lawsuit, you can subpoena officials. Well, you, you can get, get access discovery. to you a can lot do of anything, yeah. documents. Yeah, you can do a lot of, uh, get a lot of documents, and the federal government will have to prove that it was negligent, and a lot of those officials will have to spend time and, uh, if they're still alive, uh, in jail, basically, for, uh, you know, illegally dumping barrels of nuclear waste on the barrel and island, you know, in, uh, in an area that is not a military area, you know, that is not, uh, suited for nuclear waste, you know, and never should have been dumped there. So let's go for them. Go after them. Go after them, folks. It's America. You still have freedom. You still have a right to sue a government. You know, it's a wonderful privilege 
It's a wonderful right to live in a democratic country where you can do that, as opposed to Japan, which is hardly a democracy. I concur. <laughs>